Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. We're going to look at the second and third mysteries of the kingdom, or parables set forth by Jesus. Another parable put he forth, and parables a story that relates to something true. The kingdom of heaven, not God. Kingdom of heaven is a literal, physical kingdom with birds and cows and people. This is what the Hebrews, this is what Israel's looking for. They're looking for a promised land, promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, called the land of Israel. And all of Jehovah's blessings to go with it. <clears throat> It's also the world as we know it. Because the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. Well, the reality is God. But in a parable, a story, God, Jesus, is referencing the creation to a man who has a, a garden, a field. Now, the first parable, the first mystery, was a sower that went out and sowed seed. The seed is the word of God. Now, we're going to look at a man who sowed good seed. Now, you can't run the seed to what we just did in the first parable, in the first uh, mystery. Because this seed is going to be man, good man. Not the word. The kingdom has like unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. The field in the Bible is a type of world. So there are good people in the world. But while men slept, not the man. You notice that? Because the man who the story is about God doesn't sleep. While human beings slept, his enemy came. Well, we know who the enemy of God is. It's the devil. Satan. And so tares among wheat and went his way. Now, wheat is the good seed. Man is likened to wheat. Tares is an exact imitation of wheat. That you cannot tell the difference unto its harvest. When wheat will bring forth its bread, and the tares don't bring forth anything. The wheat produces fruit, the tares unfruitful. You can automatically, from the study of the Bible, realize who is what and what is who. <clears throat> so, what we see, what Jesus is saying, not everybody's good, and... We're going to see in a moment, not everybody goes to heaven. There is good wheat, and then there's the imitation fall tares. They look and talk, and, and they're human. They're males and females. They're just a product of Satan. And you can run that back to Cain and Abel. Now, Cain... And there are some that teach that, you know, uh, Eve had intercourse with Satan and produced, and you run over to uh, Hebrews and James or whatever it is. No. Human nature, the free will of God, is we're all born of Adam and Eve. And there are some good. And there are some fouls. 
and a a, a bad a tear in the world could be somebody you know he, he's got a good family he makes a good living he does what he's supposed to he looks just and you would think he's the one going to go to heaven in all reality he'd be the one that goes to hell because his ways are he's rebellious against God you can't tell them apart only the thing you could tell apart, one is fruitful of bread. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. If you don't come from the staff of bread of Jesus Christ, you're a tear. There is no such thing as a plant that is a tear and a wheat, and a wheat or in a tear. You can't be half saved. You can't be half unsaved. But when the blade was sprung up, it starts to grow and brought forth fruit. That's the wheat. It looks like the parable we just read. It looks like the mystery. But the seed is the word of God and the seed is what the word does in a man's heart. Now the seed is actually man. And he grows up. And appeared to tears also. This is not a description you, you can put to the church. Though there's no church yet. In Jerusalem, in Israel. Among the Jews, among the, the church today, the Christian church, there are wheat. There are Jews today who are proper in line with God, Jehovah, and Jesus Christ. And then there are Jews running around. They pretend, they act, they do, but they're not wheat. In the Christian church, there are saved Christians. And in the very same church building, if the rapture were to happen on a Sunday morning, there will be some people in that church building, they're not going. Woe be if your pastor's still preaching when the, when the trump of God blows and, the, and those that are alive are caught up together with those that have died in Christ. That'd be quite embarrassing. Wouldn't it be quite embarrassing that if you got this easy believism and you have them come walk the altar and they get up there and say, say this prayer and the trunk blows and both the pastor and that person is still there. That'd be quite embarrassing. What do you explain? Well, he looked like wheat. It kind of supposed to look like wheat. It was terror. And when the world says, all are welcome and come as you are, you're inviting the tares in. But the tares is not the wheat. The church, if you want to look, the church would be called wheat if this parable would go for us today. No church building. Be wheat. Well, the tares are not Christians. The tares are not the church. They're not the body of Christ. They will be left behind one day when the rapture happens. That's where you can put this parable and this mystery of the kingdom as far as the church. When the rapture of the church happens, well, the wheat's gone and the tares remain. The unsaved. But you can't go, because we're going to read more. We can't go into it because you're in serious error. I, I mean, you can go spiritually apply this application, but you're going to have to put that warning. Warning. So the servants, <clears throat> that's a bad word today, of the householder, well, that'd be God. Householder, the house of Israel. You get that? Do you get that throughout all the Old Testament? The house of Israel. The house of Israel.
Israel belongs to God. But they're not all right with God. Don't don't claim to because I'm Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I can prove it. That don't mean anything. You still can be a certified Jew of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and go to one of the sons of Jacob and name it. But if you're not right with God, you'll still go to hell. Remember, we're focusing in Matthew to the Jew. And said unto him, Sir, this, this parable is going to lay all itself out. I'm trying not to give it away. This not thou so good seed in the field. I mean, can you imagine the angels coming to God and say, God, what happened to, to, to Adam and, and, and Eve there? Didn't they come from you? Didn't they get right? Isn't, isn't that the question that people ask? Where, where did bad, where did evil come from? That's a standard question. And the Bible has the answer. There are good people approved of God and there are good people not approved of God who are of the devil. How and why? And I, I sat under a preacher and go, oh, I don't like the word free will. Well, what are you going to call it? God is not going to force you to do evil. God is not going to force you to do good. God is not going to force you to get saved. God is not going to force you to go to hell. That is the doctrine of Calvinism. And that's not scriptural. Cain had a choice, and we read in the Bible when we studied it, and when you study it, every time you go through Genesis chapter 4, God dealt with Cain. Cain could have said, you know what, you're right, God, I am completely sorry. I, I, I blew it. I, I, my, whatever it was. Can't say anger, we don't know. But he didn't. And he went the way of Satan and his family. And what's happened is, all right, here's mankind, we're 2022. And we got people who are saved and going to heaven. We got people blowing each other away with guns and, and violence and kidnapping and, and just wars and tragedies, all kinds of religions. And this one teaches this and that one teaches that. This one says those people are going to hell. And these people, they don't. You know, what is all this mess? I mean, I work with good people. They ought to go to heaven. And that's not the case. Sir, did not thou sow good seed in the field, the world? But whence then has the tares? <clears throat> so if it's good seed, and the tares look like wheat set for fruit, so there would be tares that look good. Their green is good. Their brown is good. Their height is good, just like the wheat. They just don't have the fruit. Now, again, are you going to be so bold in the church? They say, oh, well, you know, uh, no one's gotten saved by you. You're going to hell. No, 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 no. You see where we start clashing? Under the law, if you didn't produce no fruit, okay, your salvation was questionable. That's the teaching of, of all the modern religion, Catholic and all that. Be good, do good, happy, good, and let your light be shining. Wonderful how great God will love you. And when we get to heaven, we'll all sing praises to you, sing praises to me, sing praises to everybody. Kumbaya. 
And then when the Pope is undone, getting undone and undangry, whatever, and religions and all and all, and get all done, and listen, then the heathen will get allowed to come and sit at the feet of the good ones in the back. Whatever their religion teaches. But that's not real. And there'll be people that want on street mate for me. I'll talk what I know. A lot, the biggest thing I ever heard was I'm good. And I would ask some people, what is your good? And they'd give me that look like, what are you talking about? And, well, my good must be everything. I said, listen, I, I was in prison ministry for six years. I said, you wouldn't believe some of the crimes that they were in that jail for. And I said, if you were to go into a prison service and say, anybody in this room, if you think you're good, raise your hand. All those hands will go up. Now, wouldn't you think at a minimum security that there would be some bad? I said, one of the people, I'm not, one, one of the people murdered his landlord. Now, would you say that's good? And she's like, no. He'd raise his hand and say he was good. You're kidding. No. I said, I, I had the foolish thing when I was in prison ministry. The first time, one of the first few times I preached at the prison, was I had this great message. I said, anybody in this prison who does not deserve to be in this prison, raise your hand. And every hand went up. And I saw the correction order laugh. I'm like, because he saw the look in my face. I was not expecting that. They blew my message out of the water. Surely I thought somebody would be in prison would think, hey, I don't belong here. Okay? But surely there would be someone in prison would think, hey, I deserve to be here. <laughs> There's a standard of good. It's what the Bible says. That these servants have looking at these people and say, well, if they're not approved of God... <laughs> Where did they come from? And that's a very good question. And he said unto them, an enemy, we know who the enemy is, it's Satan, has done this. The servant said unto them, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Let's go get the wheat. That sounds very good too. Well, why don't we go eliminate the, the good from the bad? No, I can't try. Okay. Now, what if you throw the church age doctrine in here? What if you say, okay, here's a rapture. Here's, but he said, nay. God say no to the rapture? Why would God say no? If, if you're going to say this is the rapture, why would God say no to the rapture? At least while you gather up the tares, the bad, the enemy, he root up also the wheat with them. Is there going to be a rapture of the unholy ones? Because that's what that verse is saying. They say, the reapers, let's go gather the bad. Are you going to say that there's a rapture of the wicked before? No, you'd be foolish. How about we get all the wicked out of the world? Do you realize even in the millennium, there will be, how do you say it, ungood people in, in the millennium? They're not all going to be saved. They're not all going to do right. Because when Satan is loose at the end of the thousand years, he gathers an army from countries to fight against the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and his people, the Jews, and the church has been reigning. Uh, evidently, there's tears in the millennium. That's what Jesus has told you. The kingdom of heaven, the millennium. There's good wheat and there's tares. 
Don't you ever, ever, ever preach that in the millennium everything is absolutely perfect. Because in the millennium, there's a place at the Dead Sea, uh, the lake of fire. And if Jesus tells you in judgment, go jump in the lake, you've been proven to be guilty and your sentence is in hell. Bodily and soul. And your spirit returns back to God. That family that rose against Moses in the wilderness, when the ground opened up and swallowed everything, that's what... <laughs> That's going to happen in the millennium if you go against God. <clears throat> in 28 and 29, it's not gathering the good people. Is it? He said, listen, the enemy has sold the terror. And they're like, well, let's, let's go gather all the enemy up and leave the wheat in the world. He says, no. There is never going to be a world here that will be filled with all good people. Never. I don't care about utopia. I don't care about the Catholic kingdom. I don't care about the plans that the Mormons are going to have. I don't care about whatever the Jehovah Witnesses want. I don't care about the, the thing of, of the Muslims and their worldwide fame and everything like that. Never. The good people will be in New Jerusalem, New Heavens, and New Earth. After this heavens and this earth and everything here burns up in a flame. You see how you cannot put this on the church age. And actually there is no church age right now. You say, what are you talking about? The church age is because the Jews outright said to God, we don't want your way, we don't want your Messiah. God sent Paul out. Paul went out with, with the apostles to the Jews. God opened up a door a little bit for the Ethiopian eunuch and uh, Cornelius. Paul went out with a full desire for the Jews, and Paul got one point, that I, I'm done with you guys. I'm going to the Gentiles. And God's like, okay, I'll let the Gentiles in. And the only reason why there's a Gentile, the only reason why there's a church today is because we are a stumbling block to the Jew. That, hey, you didn't want the Messiah? That dead dog over there, he took him. That guy over there churned his God from Zeus and Pegasus and whatever the gods are. And I can't say Esther, and, I mean, Esteris, and I can't say uh, Tammuz because. These holidays are now coming back. Sorry, I can't say that. But whatever the Gentile, Paul said there was even one Gentile, you know, to the statue of the unknown God. <laughs> you know, that, that, just, that Gentile, I'll have them turn to me and worship my son and show you that, hey. And Peter's attitude was, I don't. I haven't eaten no unclean thing, and that was done three times. Then he ends up going to Cornelius. <clears throat> Let both grow together in the harvest. That's God speaking. And our job today as Christians, while we are in this wheat and tares of good and evil, according to God or the devil. We're to go out and preach the gospel. We can do something. We can help convert the tares to become wheat. But the problem is with the, with the wheat of the church today is the, the, the wheat becomes tares to gain the tares and you've got a whole field of tares called the church. Now you've got tares that that male tear tears love the male tears and the female tears love the female tear. Now we've hired that group into the and you tore the whole thing up.
And inside the barn, if I can use that, because the barn's coming up, you got Satan inside. Hey, man, glory to God, you guys are doing a great job. And Jesus Christ is out the barn door. Hello? And you guys want to come out? Is there any wheat in there? Being choked by the tares? I wonder how many Christians today on Thanksgiving, I wonder how many Christians out there had their family meal, their Thanksgiving with their unsaved family, while people in their church, no family, whatever reason, sat home alone, thinking, oh, you're supposed to love the brethren, really? You would fellowship with the unsaved more than you would do the saved. That's not biblical. Pastors get it. Oh, there's one time here, Thanksgiving, one Thanksgiving, one time. That, that one time they, they come out with the Thanksgiving message, the thanking God, praise God, glory to God. What <clears throat> about the 52 other weeks? Aren't we supposed to praise God? 365, this is a day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and joy. No, that's only one day a year. I just read today, the author of Mary Had a Little Lamb is the one that promoted Abraham Lincoln to make it official Thursday of November. Yeah, I know George Washington, but Abraham Lincoln put it in B, put it to the government holiday that it is today. And the, the author of the Mary Had a Little Lamb with, with her magazine, whatever it was, newspaper, whatever it was, she was an outright feminist. For women's lib, women's rights. And that's what you're basing to. Oh, we got to thank God today. We got to give everything to God today. That wasn't the foundation. Well, you know, well, okay, George Washington and the Pilgrims. The whole story of the American Pilgrims is absolutely correctly wrong. They say there was even no turkeys at all, if very few. And they sure didn't have pumpkin, pecan, and apple pies and all that. I saw a chart today, one of my friends on Facebook, book. they had, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a chart. And the men and women and the families that were on the Mayflower, and they were all like, they had all a shade of color. Underneath that chart, the people who had died between the Mayflower landing and the first Thanksgiving they had, they were grayed out. But you could see the, you know, the, the silhouette. You'd be amazed how many pilgrims made it through that long, hard, Winter in season. Listen, when they first got off the boat, that many of the wives died because the, it's the middle of the winter. The wives went out to wash the clothes. I don't know what they called it, the bay, the Boston there. And they, they froze. Uh, flu. And today, a lot of people are flus. He said, let them grow together. You're not going to get a utopia world on this side of, of, of the heavens and earth and all being burnt up. Now watch this. In the time of the harvest. Now, now this is a Jewish. Because there's no rapture in the church. Because there is no church to the Jews. I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares. Okay, this is when everybody's all gathered together. This is the great white throne judgment. And bind them in bundles to burn them. Hell! There's hell! I don't blame in hell. That's sure not the grave. Because if the grave is hell and hell is the grave, at this point in time in Revelation 20, there is absolutely no heavens and earth at all. 
they fled and burnt up, Peter said. New heavens and new earth have not come yet. So how can you burn up in a grave that's no grave anymore? And it says in Revelation, and the graves open up and hell open up and the seas open up and gave the dead that were in them. Same judgment. Those that get burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. At the great white throne judgment, there are saved and there are lost individuals according to the dispensation they were. There are no Christians there. We went up in the rapture. We were judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Everybody from Adam, excluding the born again saved Christians, are going to be at the great white throne judgment. The books are open and the works are judged. And if you were to found faithful to what God said in the dispensation, no one will go to heaven because he did what God told him to do. He built an ark. And if you live in Tennessee, wherever it is in America, well, we built an ark. But I never told you to build an ark. I told you to believe on Jesus. Go to hell or lake of fire. And if you were to apply what we just read tonight to the church, are you telling me that there will be people in the church that God's going to judge, God is going to call out, and he's going to bind them up, and he's going to put them in a the flame? And then you're going to turn around and say, well, you know, once saved, always saved, but, you know, if we go to Matthew, 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 open your Bibles to Matthew, open your Bibles to Matthew, open your, and the Great Commission of Matthew, no, the Great Commission is Mark, which a lot of modern Bibles have removed, Mark 16, going all the way. See, if we don't, if we tell people Matthew's commission, we won't have to tell them go in the world and preach the gospel because we can tell them, invite them to the church. Here's our church card, our church information, our great pastor's name located in church time. Ta da! Invite them out to, to fellowship, invite them out to the game. Dun, 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 and we'll have tickets at the door. Uh, that? Listen, I'm not mocking VBS when it first started. You know, evolution, it's a lie. Things get bad. Things get rotten. Things get sour. But when you got every church out there now assigned, we're doing VBS. <laughs> every church. When I got kicked out of a church in Deland, Florida, because I said, your church is too decorated for your VBS. It is an eyesore. Well, you don't need to come back. I don't care what that pastor said. I don't care what the, the pages of email he sent me two or three weeks afterward. The reason why he told me not to come back is if you don't like the VBS decorations, then don't come back. Now I'll sit down and write something. Tell God I'm wrong. Okay. Next one. Number three. Another parable we put forth in the same. And you're going to see this in the church. The kingdom of heaven. That's not church. And not the kingdom of God. It's like a grain of mustard seed. Very tiny thing. Which a man took. Almost like, you know, the man that did the, the wheat. Who planted the kingdom of heaven? God did. Genesis 1. And to, to make it more realized to you, and he's preaching Genesis 1, is, okay, everybody knows what a man is, right? We can't say that no more, can we? Because there are people saying, well, I'm not a male. I'm one of 40. I think there's like 42 different kinds of sexes now. I talked to somebody who went to a doctor's office and they got the form and they, you had you had the check of one I, of all the sexes there were a doctor's office. You know what I was said? Here's your paperwork. Here's your form. If your doctor don't know what sex is, he I ain't working on him. 
I had to uh, counsel with, with my diabetes, uh, and I started, and these people that they counsel with in different sexes and all. No, 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 no. no. I ain't gonna, no. If you don't know what sex is, it, you're not worth talking to because in the, there's a male and a female. Okay, and there are people. Well, I was born a man, but I, I'm a female. Yeah, okay, you need to be locked up. <laughs> you can't even say that today. You know what a man is. People get aggravated because you use the wrong pronoun. If you don't know what's wrong with the blue and yellow and alcohol, and the blue and yellow pills and alcohol, that's the problem right there. And the college professor. I think really, no, no, I shouldn't say that. No, they're really good. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed. Can you now see, can you see mustard seed, neon lights, flashing Christian? Oh. If you only had grain, faith is a mustard seed. Oh, you only had faith in a mustard You see, I got a mustard seed necklace. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you. This comes out of the Gospels. All right, let's let's. Which a man took and sold in his field, the world. The world belongs to God. This world is my world. It's, no, 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 no. Okay. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, and it's a very tiny seed. I think only like tomatoes and bananas, I've not been, uh, are small. But it didn't say it was the smallest of these seeds, the least of seeds. But when it is grown. Now, the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, is there mustard seed seeds in, in God's kingdom? No. Is there wheat in God's heaven? No. Are there people that represent, human beings that represent the devil, the enemy, terrorists? No. But there is the devil in heaven, and there are the devil's angels, a third of them in heaven, but not man. So if a person is not saved and dies, he's not resting in peace, he's not going to the glory land. If he's a tear, he went to hell burning. It's the greatest among herbs. I mean, you make mustard out of mustard seed. And that's got a, a taste. You can use the mustard leaves. It becometh a tree. Is there a tree in heaven? Or the tree of life? No, it's not. Don't you read your Bible? The tree of life is in New Jerusalem, not heaven. So that the birds, are there birds in heaven? God's kingdom? No. They're here on the earth. Now birds, okay, birds. Go back to chapter 13, verse 4. And when he sold, some fell by the wayside, and the birds, or fowls, came up and devoured them. Okay. Now. Uh, verse 19. When, when one heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one. Now I got pet birds. But in the Bible, in the Bible, birds are in the form or ambassadors or something of the devil. That in the kingdom that the man owns, he planted a seed and a tree grew. 
in that tree is birds. In the harvest, uh, in the world, there the man planted seed. He planted wheat, and in that wheat is the is the tares planted by the enemy. To the seed planted in the world, and a tree grew in the tree, like in the wheat is the tares. In the tree, there are birds. Birds represent in this chapter the devil. Come and lodge in the branches. There, there are people of the devil in the world. They're living in the same place we are. And trees in the Bible also liken to people. There's a man that was blind. He says, and Jesus says, "What do you see?" He says, "I see men as tree walking." And then there was another, you know, there's, there's, uh, these trees, they represent, and what they represented was men, or a man. So the foundation of why we have wicked people in the earth is the enemy. They have chosen to follow the enemy because Satan can't make them do it and God can't make them do it. It's their own free will. You got people that come out of a good church with good doctrines. Uh, Whitney Houston. And I'm, oh man, I can't think of his name. I think Alice Cooper, I think. I could be wrong on that one. They were, their parents, one grew up in the church and one's parents were, his father was a preacher. And he'll tell you. And they went out in the world. And there have been people in, in the rock and roll and people in, in the music industry and there have been people in the Catholic church. And they come to God's side. They've gone through Jesus Christ and gotten saved. They've gotten right. There's a difference. And we're not talking about Gentiles. And we're not talking about talking about Jews. You know what the Jews would if you, you know what the Jews would say if you were to bring a Gentile into these two stories? You know what the Gentiles would be? The cow poop. They'd be the dog doo doo. The urine from animals. Pig urine. That's where the that's where the Gentiles would stand. Don't even put the Gentiles. Don't put America. There's no America yet. Don't put the church. There's no church. We're talking about the nation of Israel. And God says, as far as the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you still could be of the devil. You could be the you could be the son of Adam and Eve and still be a murderer, or the one that brought the blood, or the one two out of three. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. You realize we don't know how many children Adam and Eve have. But we read only of two children out of all the children. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't there. We're, you know, we only read about two children. That, and Adam and Eve had, had uh, sons and daughters, the Bible says. Genesis 5. You realize you only read about two children that did right and one was killed early. Abel was killed. He brought blood. He did right. God was pleased with him. Cain, you know the story of Cain. Seth is born, and the Bible records the Holy Spirit says, "Then men they became to call on. Then men became. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord." I don't know anybody anything else about the other sons and daughters of, of, of Adam and Eve, but okay, there may have been good ones, but they're not recorded. But we don't know. But what pure stock could you get but from Adam and Eve? There was no other. And out of 
Three, bo three boys of all the children, two did right and one did wrong. And I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you all the children that Adam and Eve had, there were more that were for Satan than there were for God. If you're going to tread through Matthew, especially these, these Paul has his mysteries. You want the church mysteries, you go to Paul. You got to tread very lightly. And you're going to have to make many notes of warning that this is not for the church age. I am spiritually applying this passage of scriptures. This is not doctrinal. This is not historical. There's been no death and as you got, there's been no death and burial or resurrection of Jesus. That plain and simple. 